So if you're returning to work from maternity leave and want to reduce your hours, there are a number of ways you can go about it. Firstly, and most easily, you can have a chat informally with your boss and your employer and say, look, this is what I'd like to do. And for many companies and many organisations, that will suffice, an informal approach. Uh, for other companies, a more formal approach is going to be necessary, and so it's worth looking at whether your employer has a policy and a procedure about this and how to follow this. Employees have the right to make a, a request for flexible working. In writing, you'll need to put some details in it about what you're intending to do. And then your employer's got to consider that in a reasonable manner, and if they do turn it down, there's got to be a good business reason for them to do so. When you do return from maternity leave, you have a right to come back to the same job or suitable alternative. So any changes to that would have to be agreed between you and your employer. So if you want to change an aspect of your contract, you're probably going to need to have a chat with your boss about it. And it's worth thinking about a few things first. Why do you want to do this? What kind of contractual changes are you looking for? What would be ideal? What would you be willing to settle with? And then to you know, approach your boss, and this can sometimes be done informally, may also need to be done formally, a, you know, a formal right to request flexible working, for example. Any contractual terms that are changed will be agreed between you and your boss. So it's worth being clear on why you're looking for these changes and then trying to find some arrangement that works for you, your team, and also the business. Before you do, it might also be helpful to have a look at some of the guidance that ACAS has produced and put on our website about this. Um, we've got a guide on flexible working and also one on work-life balance that gives a bit more detail for employees and also employers about how to approach these issues. So if you're an employer and you've received a request for flexible working, the first thing to do, which you may not be surprised to hear, is think, do we have a policy on this? And if you need to dust down a policy, it's worth checking that it's reasonable and up to date and contains the right information. It should. If it does, then it's going to be about following the steps in that policy. So the keys are going to be that you're going to have received a request for flexible working and as it's a, a request it should contain a few different types of information such as that it's a statutory request, details on the, the specifics the employee is looking for and you're going to then deal with that in a reasonable manner and it's going to be worth thinking about the process for doing that. So you're going to have to think about who's going to chair the meeting for doing that, who's going to be in charge of the decision, who might be uh, a person for the appeal if the employee doesn't accept the decision, who they're going to appeal to, and then you're going to hold that meeting and have the meeting with the employee. And in that meeting, I suppose they're one of three possible outcomes. You could agree to it outright and say, you know what, this works, and so it's quite easy and simple. You could say, no, we can't do this at all, and if so, you need to give a clear business reason for why you're saying no. Or your third option is some form of compromise, so some kind of middle ground that you work out with the employee and then put in writing at the end of that meeting. So those are your main steps, but in general I'd also say it's worth having a look on our website. We've got a guide to flexible working and it contains lots of helpful information for employers and it's a really good first port of call for this issue.